the winner of Salem Broadcasting's Talk Show of the Year Award and the Virginia Association of Broadcasters Awards for Outstanding Feature Reporting and for Best Documentary, it's the Don Crow Show on Life-Changing Talk Radio, WAVA. Hello there, folks. Hey, hello. A very special hour. You want to stay right where you are. In fact, get near your phone, because this is an hour especially for you to uh, get some answers and uh, really find solutions to some of your challenges when it comes to mortgages, refinancing, etc., etc. Always delighted to have Mark Livingstone in the studios with us from Cornerstone First Financial and uh, he is sitting across from me, as usual, ready to go, and I assume, Mark, well, first of all, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Good Great to be here. here, as always. And you've got folks, I'm sure, at the, at the uh, office as well. You've of given course. them their marching orders, That's right? That's right. They're working late this evening. All right, uh, folks, we'll give you that number as well, 202-625. No, yes. Right. That's the office, 202-625-1221. Right. Uh, just I had a cramp there for a moment okay. in my brain. I like it when we say that together. Yes. It sounds better. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yes. We should do that throughout the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> drive folks nuts. Anyway, here's what we're going to be doing, folks. Is First of all, let me tell you right up front. If you have a mortgage question of some sort or other, and I know you do, you want to get in early because invariably, I call it the getting on the bus routine. If you wait to the end of the show or the last segment, you all want to get on then, and the bus is already, the doors are closing on the bus. You get my point? So it's okay to call. Julie will get you lined up with your particular questions as we proceed through the hour. And, of course, our number here is 888-293-9282. Again, 888-293-9282. We've never done a show together where we were able to get to all the calls, so uh, take advantage of the fact that all the phone line banks, uh, the, the whole bank is open right now. All the phone lines are available at this moment. Uh, so get ready with your questions. Okay, uh, let's uh, launch this thing as to where we are mortgage-wise, interest rates, and so on today. What's happening well, well, in the industry? Let me tell you, I yeah. just love that you invite me on your show whenever something's happening within the real estate or mortgage market. And I've had people call me and say, you know, that WAVA, they're educational, they're informative. And the fact that, Mark, they invite you on there so consistently and that you're just like the mortgage guru, guru. thank you, <laughs> We even have <laughs> that, brains that they, are working the same place tonight. That they appreciate it so much. So I, 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 it's a pleasure to be here, and I just want to update all the listeners with what is happening because so many things have changed since I was last here just six weeks ago. You know, we had the government shutdown. We've had the, um, the non-tapering. They were talking about tapering, the quantitative easing, which is the purchase of the mortgage-backed securities. There was a lot of rumblings about that, and so that pushed interest rates to a level where we haven't seen in five or six years. Well, that didn't happen, so now that we're having the non-tapering, at least until the early part of 2014, we've seen a relief in the rates. So that's big news. We had the budget ceiling talks, obviously, and we avoided going into default on our national debt, which is good news for the mortgage industry. But all of this comes together, Don, to let the listeners know that interest rates are back down to great levels, levels we have not seen since June of this year. So in May, interest rates spiked up and they just kept going. But in June, they were right about where they are right now, which is really good news. We've had one non-farm payrolls report, which came out last week, which drove the rates even lower. And next Friday, there's another non-farm payrolls report, which is coming out, which I think may push them down even more. So right now, what that means for your listeners in layman's terms is that it's a great time, an excellent opportunity to take advantage of these low rates because with the talks coming up at the beginning of next year, with the economy perhaps picking up because of employment over the season, the, the seasonal employment picking up, that right now that window of opportunity for low rates is very short, very short. So right now is a great time, whether you're switching from an adjustable rate to a fixed rate whether you are switching to take cash out of your home. Because right here in the WAVA listening area, we're seeing pockets of 15% appreciation just in the, in the first half of this year. It's amazing. So we're seeing homes that have appreciated 15%, Don, just in areas like Fairfax, Montgomery County, um, 
Prince George's County, it's a little bit lower. It's about 8% appreciation this year so far. But if you were one of those people that didn't qualify for a government program to refinance because you had little to no equity, you may want to do yourself a favor and try it again. So now is the time to either refinance or buy that new home. That is correct. Yes, especially because values are moving up so quickly. And again, folks, we're going to take your calls. We're going to take a break in a moment and then come back to your calls, which are already coming in. But if you want to get in line, you need to do it now at 888-293-9282, 888-293-9282. And again, as we always say, loan officers are standing by throughout the afternoon into the evening hours at the office of Cornerstone First as well. And you can uh, check that out at 202-625-1221, 202-625-1221, or on the web Cornerstone First. Dot com. I tell you what, let's take one call before the first break and have John get us started. John and Herndon, you're on with Mark Livingstone. Thanks for the call. Hey, John. Hey, guys. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. Uh, I had a question for you about, I, I'm not sure. Someone told me recently about a uh, heart program. Okay. Because, um, you know, in our neighborhood where I think a lot of the houses are either right on the cusp or, you know, close to being underwater. Okay. Very good. And I heard that someone, you know, one of my neighbors said they used the HARP program, were able to refinance. I'm not really sure what that is, and I was just kind of calling up about it. Excellent. Okay, John. So the HARP is the Housing Affordability Refinance Program. And actually, it's funny you say that because a report just came out from Realty Track that said that 47% of the people that qualify have not taken advantage of it. And this is because they don't realize that they're eligible. So people are paying their mortgage to Wells Fargo or Bank of America, and so they don't think that they qualify because the loan has to be held by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. If it's a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan, John, then you may qualify for the HARP program, which allows you to refinance and take advantage of these very, very low rates, and it doesn't matter if you have little to no equity, okay? Now, I'm sorry, how do you how do you find out if you're eligible? Okay, good question, good question. You have to go on the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac website, and actually there is a link to it on our website, cornerstonefirst.com, and you go to the HARP page, and that HARP page will have a link to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which then you can put in your address, your name, and the last four of your social security number, and it will pop up whether or not you qualify. And if you do, hey, you're good to go, and you can take advantage of these very low rates. What's your rate right now? Uh, 6.25, I think. Perfect. Okay. Then, then definitely. The 30-year fix right now is in the very low fours, so I think that would save you a couple hundred dollars a month at least, John. Is, is now, is, if I'm not eligible for, for the HARP program, and, and, like, is there another program out there that would do, do something? Only if you have a VA loan or an FHA loan. If it's not a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, VA, or FHA loan, then unfortunately, no, there's no programs at this time. All right. Okay. Well, hey, guys, thank you very much. Hey, You're our welcome. pleasure. Thanks, Thanks John. John. All right, we're going to take a break, come back. Again, some lines open, some callers in line already. If you want to get in line and talk with Mark Livingstone at Cornerstone First, give us a call, 888-293-9282, 888-293-9282. One more time, 888 888- 293-9282. We'll be right back. The Don Crow Show on WAVA. Our number is 888-293-9282. Delighted to have Mark Livingstone in studio with us from Cornerstone First Financial. And we're talking about all the various aspects of refinancing mortgages, reverse mortgages, harps, and uh, VA loans, and all. Whatever your question, we'd love to hear it. Let's go to Billy in Sterling, Virginia. Hi, Billy. You're on with Mark Livingstone. Hey, how you doing, guys? Thank you very much for taking my call. Hey, sure. Billy. Um, I just have a quick question. I, um, I'm in the process of, of doing a, a VA loan. Actually, I'm trying to pull some cash out of the property. And unfortunately, my appraisal came in a little lower uh, than we had thought. And originally, we were doing this at like a 90%. We were trying to max it out. Uh, and then I heard that actually VA would allow up to 100%. Um, I just wanted to call, I guess, to, to find out that it is in fact the case. 
Right. Okay. Well, here's the thing: is is VA does allow up to a hundred percent cash out, Billy. However, it depends on the company you're going with. Most mortgage companies do cap you at ninety percent. However, okay. one of the benefits of working with Cornerstone is that we are a mortgage broker, which means that we have about twenty different banks that we align ourselves with, so that when someone like you call and you're a vet, and thank you for your service, by the way, uh, mm-hmm. that when you do call. Uh, we can offer you products that other banks or credit unions cannot. So that's why I always say, oh. hey, if we can't do it, I don't think anybody can. And that's why we keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening in the industry so that we know every product out there. And if a lender comes to me and says, hey, Mark, we want you to sign up. And I say, well, what do you have that I don't already have? I'm not going to sign up with you if you have everything, that, what, what we already have. So, uh, Billy, oh, if right. you're, I, I don't know how far into the process you are. However, if you're looking for 100%, cash out in hand, yes, that's something that we do with VA loans. Well, so, and, and we're not just talking about uh, consolidating mortgages. I have a first and second. I was looking to consolidate mortgage and actually get cash in hand to help, to help pay off debt. I can get actually cash at closing? If the appraised value allows you to wrap, off, wrap in the first and second mortgage, and then there's more money for you to get, absolutely. We will do cash uh-huh. in hand up to 100%. That is perfect. Uh, and, and, and what's your phone number again? I'm sorry. Uh, it's 202 202- Six two five twelve twenty one, or or you can oh. go on and uh, put your information on our website at cornerstonefirst dot com, and then also if there's a uh, someone listening with a VA loan currently, we can do streamlined VA loans, and it doesn't matter if your house is underwater. You can't get cash out, of course, but we can refinance you. The rate's three and three quarters today on a thirty year fixed, and you can refinance, and it doesn't matter how far upside down your mortgage is. Wow, that is great. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, Billy. Thank hey, you. you. too. Thank you. Okay, yeah, bye-bye. Bye. Let's talk with Drew in Washington, D.C. Drew, thanks for waiting. You're on with Mark Livingstone. Hello? Hello. Hey, Drew. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, thank you. What can we do for you? Uh, well, I was just calling in. I had a uh, mortgage uh, that I was trying to do with Wells Fargo, and it's been like four months. It's, it's under that HARP program. I don't really understand the whole program, but... Uh, I just find it odd that it's going to take a length for four months to do my loan. It's quite frustrating. Okay, I, and I can understand that. And actually, you're not alone. I, I get that all the time, how long it takes. A refinance, whether it's a HARP, a VA, whatever it is, should not take more than, uh, you know, I don't want to pigeon my whole, myself, pigeonhole myself here, but I'm going to say 30 to 45 days max. And a lot of these very large lenders... Uh, like the one you're working with right now, they have let a lot of their processors and underwriters go uh, because of the higher interest rates. So I am hearing consistently that it's taking a lot longer for these big lenders to close loans in a timely fashion. And then what that means to you, the consumer, is that your rate might may expire and they pass on to you the rate extensions. So ultimately, taking a longer time to refinance is going to cost you more money because you have to pay to get your rate extended. So therefore, yes, typically it takes us at Cornerstone, if you're, you have a, a conforming or a VA or any kind of government loan, 30 to 45 days at most. All right, and then is that normal? Because, I mean, just the Spell Farmer thing is just it's, it's nuts. I can't even talk to anyone over there. Right. Well, yes, actually, unfortunately, it is normal with the bigger lenders. And so what we do is we have about like I said earlier, 20 different lenders that we send our business to, um, and then we keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on with that loan, and I can tell you it's 30 days, 45 days max to get it closed, okay? All right, all right. That's, that's, that's comforting. I, uh, maybe I'll give Wells Fargo one last try, but uh, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath. They just they won't even answer the phone anymore. Okay. Well, I mean, you're welcome to uh, go on our website or give us a call. The number's 202-625-1221. I don't know how far you are in the uh, process right now, Drew, but uh, you know, if you just started, then give us a call. Let us see what we can do as far as interest rate also. Um, but if you're way down the road and you're getting ready to close, you may want to stay with them. But use us right. as a sounding board, even though you're using another company, to make sure you're getting the best deal and program for you and your family, okay? Okay, sure. That sounds fair. All right, my friend. Have a great I evening. It. Okay, uh-huh. thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Let's go to, is it uh, Hag, uh, Virginia? Richard? Hello, Richard. Hello? Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Richard. Hi, Lord. What uh, can I do for I you? Have, uh, I have a, I have a, a, a thirty year mortgage. I have twenty two years left. I, my rate is five point eight five. It's an FHA loan and it's a manufactured home. What okay. can I do? 
Uh, manufactured homes, my friend. Unfortunately, uh, I, I, I've just, just in the last caller was telling me that we have a whole plethora of different products we can offer. Manufactured homes, we don't have. However, I have a contact for you. So if you call me at the office or email me directly, Richard, I can put you in touch with someone that can work on a manufactured home. And my email is mark at cornerstonefirst.com. First is spelled out. Okay, Richard? Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Uh, all right, my friend. Have a great evening. All okay. right, let's go to uh, Washington, D.C. Talk with Jenny. Jenny, you're on with Mark Livingstone. Go ahead. Hello. Um, I'm calling because I have a balloon loan that has reached its maturity date, and I have a low credit score, so I haven't been able to receive a lot of assistance. I want to know if it's okay for me to continue making my payment and what other resources are available for me. It would depend on what was in the original mortgage deed and note and what the repercussions of the balloon coming due means. A lot of balloons, they, they transfer into a fixed rate instead of coming due. Do you know if that is what's going on with yours, Jenny? Well, I know there's a collateral for my home if the balloon loan isn't paid and the rate of the loan was 9.75. It's, it's a high nine point. Okay, let me ask you this. A, do you have equity in the home? And B, what is your credit score? Um, I do have equity in the home, a lot of equity. Okay, that's good. And uh, what is the current interest rate? Or I'm sorry, what's your uh, uh, credit score? 580. 580, okay. How old are you? Excuse me. Uh, okay. no, Jenny? How, it's 540, my, my 540, um, okay. credit 540. Okay, FHA will allow us actually to go to a 580, but not a 540. So we need to get that credit score up just 40 points, and then we perhaps could do an FHA loan for you, which would be backed by HUD. But let me ask you this. How old are you? 59. 59. Okay, and disabled. Because I can say, if you have a lot of equity and you're 62 years or older, we could do a reverse mortgage, which... Just in the last three months, we've seen a 65% increase in reverse mortgage applications. Um, so reverse mortgages are really hot right now. Don, I know they're not your favorite in the world, but they are good for some people, like perhaps Jenny, if she was 62 years old. You're the expert. Old. I'm not going to argue with you. But <laughs> okay. But uh, so, Jenny, here's what we need to do is get your credit score up. So if you call me at the office, I can put you in touch with someone that might be able to help get your credit score up to a level where we can maybe do an FHA loan, which will then satisfy your loan needs until maybe you can do a reverse mortgage. All right. And can I have your number? Sure. It's 202 625 1221. And just say, hey, can I have Mark's voicemail? Okay. Mark's voicemail. Right, right, right. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Jenny. Jenny. Talk All to right. you later. All right, folks, open lines right now. 888-293-9282 is the number. 888-293-9282. Good time to call and ask Mark your question. And uh, no question's a dumb question. We always had teachers say, look, the only dumb question is the one you didn't ask. You should have asked it. So uh, ask your question, and chances are the one you have for a question Others are facing something similar, and uh, they would be happy that you called because they'll benefit from the answers as well. Our number is 888-293-9282. Again, 888-293-9282. And, of course, the office number, you want to make a note of that somewhere, uh, just keep it handy, 202-625-1221. And you can call either later this evening after the show's over. You can call tomorrow or anytime, 202 625 Twelve twenty uh, twenty one, and you can check them out on Facebook, Facebook dot com forward slash Cornerstone First. That's right. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and as I was just saying, the reverse mortgage applications up sixty five percent, and you know why that is? It's because so many lenders have exited the reverse mortgage arena. So Wells Fargo is no longer offering, and they were they had the biggest monopoly of the reverse mortgages. So they're no longer doing it. So very few companies are, and we've aligned ourselves with one of the best. So reverse mortgages, something that uh, can help a lot of people out. Why are they getting out, or why have they gotten out of the mar uh, market, the big boys? Uh, probably because there's a lot of, um, I mean, there's 88 pages you need to sign up with a reverse mortgage. Uh -huh. Five of them alone are just saying that you intend to occupy the property as your primary residence. So I think it's just because there's a lot of uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, that can go down, go, go south with a reverse mortgage if the senior is not... Um, yeah, if, if they're not educated enough, and that's why you have a third party, non-interested, get doing the counseling. Uh, they're just very heavily regulated. 
Let's talk with Janice in Manassas. How are you, Janice? Pretty good. How you doing? Good. Good, Janice. How you doing? Pretty good. Uh, I've got a little bit of a confusion going on. My, my wife got pre-approved for a USDA loan, for a 100% loan. Yep. And uh, the first guy had initially taken it on, and then he passed it to someone else. And then this guy said, well, you're good to up to 250 So we started looking for homes. And the guy kind of fell out of the picture, and the other guy called us back and started up and said we were pre-approved for up to 205. So, um, and then he said if 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 I got my wife, if I got the truck out of my wife's name and put in my name, it would help. But but then I was wondering how they're looking at the credit based on my income and not her income is is that sound correct well what what it sounds like is the geographical area because usda loans the loan amount is going to be predicated by where you're buying the house so is it the same house and one person said 250 and one person said 205 well they they told us that we can only look in the western part of prince william county and falk here okay but my my question is is it uh with her, with a credit score of 680, is is that the correct amount, or should we look for somebody else to do the loan or pre-approve us? Because going from 205, from 250 to 205, I would, you know, and and not, and we did some credit repair, and he did a fast credit score, and and then it shot up. Right. Uh, I, I'm just wondering if you guys would be somebody better to deal with as far as getting uh, a little bit better. Because the difference between looking at a house from 205 to 250 is, is two different houses. Right, absolutely. Well, I know that it is based on credit score, so maybe your credit <laughs> score going up helped you to get more money. But also, I always say you want to get more than one opinion. So definitely, oh, okay. I mean, call us. I'm, I'm not saying that we can do better than what you're already getting, but at least do your due diligence. I mean, this could be the biggest purchase you have in your life, so you want to make sure that you're doing your homework and making sure you're checking out all options. I've seen interest right. rates... I mean, I had a guy call me uh, from SunTrust today who's being offered three-eighths of a point, three-eighths of a percent higher than what we were offering. So, therefore, you just want to do your homework uh, to make sure that you're getting the best deal for you and your family. Okay. I, I want to do that because it was confusing that, that he was taking in consideration my, my income, me not being on the loan application, but then telling me to put the truck in my name and somehow that would help. I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand that. Right. Okay. I, without looking at it further, I, I don't understand it either, to be honest with you. Well, listen, you okay. can, Janice, you can call uh, the office cornerstone first at 202-625-1221, all right? I appreciate that. I'll do that. Thank all you. All right. We'll take a break, come back with more. We have some lines open. We have some folks also ready to come on with their particular questions. You can add it to add yours to it. Get in the queue, as they say, 888-293-9282, 888 Good time to make a call if you have a question about mortgages, uh, refinancing, interest rates, uh, HARP programs, uh, VA loans, uh, any number of things. The expert is in the house. Mark Livingstone of Cornerstone First Financial and his staff is ready at their office as well. 202-625-1221. 202-625-1221. And of course, you get on the show here right now with your question. 888 9282. Let's talk with David in Boyd's. David, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, hey, sir. David. Boyd's, that's way out there. That's a strong signal. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not too bad, though. It's right past uh, Clarksburg. Right, out there near Sugarloaf. What's that? Out there near Sugarloaf Mountain, correct? Uh, yeah. Got it, okay. 121. Nice. Yeah. Well, well, good to hear from you. What can I do for you? Um, I'm actually... Um, I, I have two houses and I have two mortgages on each one. And basically I got, I feel like I got taken by the person I bought this house from because he was in the mortgages and stuff like that. And basically, um, the, the house that I live in, I actually have an interest only and another mortgage. And he took out equity from my other house. 
that my dad lives in and basically put it towards the purchase of, I mean, he just, he moved the numbers around. Okay. And he told me that he would help me, like, after a year um, to get better rates, and he basically, he just kicked me to the curb. Did you get it in uh, writing? I'm sorry? Did you get it in writing? Did I get it? Wh- did you get oh, the agreement in writing? Um, it's probably on, yeah, I probably have it somewhere. But Okay. I mean, if you have it in writing, then you have a guarantee that he's got to help you out. Now, that first mortgage is an interest-only loan. I'm assuming that's a very low rate, is it not? Uh, I really don't know what the interest rate is. I know the payment's not really... Small. Okay. Well, the good news yeah. is with an interest-only loan, the more money you put towards principal, the loan will recast itself. So all the people out there that have no equity and they have an interest-only loan and the rate is still pretty low, if you put just $100, $200 extra per month, the next month your payment is going to be lower because that payment is going to be based on the outstanding principal. So I, I encourage you, if you don't have any equity, to put some more money towards principal if you can. But I, I, I don't think I heard your question yet. Right. The thing is, is basically um, I have uh, a loan with Wells Fargo at my other house and IndyMac, who I don't know who they are. And basically that rate, um, you know, the because of the rate, whatever I pay towards it every month, it goes straight to the uh, interest. Right. That's so, an interest-only loan. Well, that one's not an interest-only. Okay, so it's got to be a new loan because on a, a, on a fully amortizing loan for the first two or three years, most of the money you're paying each month goes to pay principal, or I'm sorry, interest and not principal. And then as you chip away, go further down in years, more and more money will go towards principal. But let me, let me ask you again, what, what is your question specifically? So is there anything I can do? Because basically I just feel like I, I paid all this money to, um, you know, Bank of America and Countrywide for this one house and nothing, you know, I still owe the same amount. And right. the same thing with the other one. Is there anything I can do or am I basically just, you know, I just feel like I'm burning money. Right, I hear you. But you're also getting the tax deductibility of the interest. And then you also have an interest-only loan, which is designed. The interest-only loans were originally designed for those with sporadic income, those that get bonuses or those that are on commission or those that get tips, knowing that sometimes you wouldn't be able to make the full payment, but when you get that income, you can apply that towards principal. Most people don't know that or aren't disciplined enough to put the extra money towards the principal. So you're actually not in that bad of shape because, hey, you get the tax write-off, B, you can put more money towards principal, or you could call your lender and see if you qualify for a modification. Right. Okay? Okay. But feel free to call me at the office if you'd like to discuss further. Um, you know, I can put you in touch with some people that, you know, if you have means to go after that loan officer, then I, you know, I can put you in touch with some people there. But give me a call at the office. It's 202-625-1221, okay? Okay. Thanks, Mark. Great. Thanks, David. Let's go to uh, Ashburn, talk with Felicia. Felicia, thank you for waiting. You're on with Mark Livingstone. Hi, Felicia. Hi. Um, good evening. I have a, uh, a fixed mortgage with the Wells Fargo. It's 3.75. And I thought I heard Mark say, it's a VA loan, that fixed rates were, 30-year fixed were at 3.3. Should I refinance? No, no. I said the fixed rate VA, 30-year fixed right now is 3.75. Three and three quarters. Oh, okay. Yes. Three and three four. Okay. Yes. Three and three but quarters. I, I, but good question. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Felicia. Thanks. Triple eight two nine three nine two eight two. Triple eight two nine three ninety two eighty two. Let's see. We'll go to Lanham next. Talk with Marva. Hi, Marva. Hello. Good afternoon, sis. Hello, Marva. Hi. Uh, my question is on behalf of someone. Um, they're a couple. They're over sixty three. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a current. They have done a loan modification. And now they did it because they had reduced income, and now they have even further reduced income. Um, What options are available for them? Well, since they're over 62, age-wise, they qualify for the reverse mortgage. But do they have any equity in the home? That I don't know. Okay, that's you should find that out because Uh reverse mortgages are not predicated at all on credit. So you don't need equity. It's on the equity, yes. Reverse mortgages is how much your home is worth, 
how much equity you have, and your date of birth. Based on those three things, you can get an analysis run to see how much you qualify for with a reverse mortgage. So um, refinancing is out of the question for not, them as well? Not necessarily. If they did the loan modification, it depends on when they did it and have they made the payments on time since the loan modification occurred. Okay. Okay, Marva? Okay. Thank you very much. You're for welcome. Still. Have a great evening. Okay. Call me Mark. Bye-bye. Okay, thank okay, you. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Yes, he's been called much worse. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, folks. Just kidding. Triple eight two nine three nine two eight two. You see, you know, uh, Mark and I have hung out together quite a while now. All these years. How long have we been doing this together? Probably about eight years. Yeah. yeah. So we're a little more informal than I might be with other, well, other guests. Okay. <laughs> hey, Look at folks. Don back tipping or yeah. back stepping. Yeah, that's right. Listen, folks. Perfect time to call. We have a couple of uh, calls lined up, but there's some lines open. And uh, as I said earlier. Don't wait till the last segment and say, oh, I wanted to ask the question. Call now. We'll get you in the queue. We'll get you up, uh, get to you as quickly as we can. 888-293-9282. 888-293-9282. We'll be right back. And you're taking our advice. The uh, phones are, well, there's one line still open, so let's get quickly back to the phones and get as many calls in as we can. Sean in Baltimore, you are on with Mark Livingstone of Cornerstone First. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. Um, we have a conventional loan. Okay. And um, we've been trying to refinance with a couple of different companies, and everybody keeps telling us that there's nothing they can do with the loan. They can't refinance it because it's not FHA or anything like that. So um, it's not FHA, VA, Fannie Mae, or Freddie Mac. Right. And are you underwater? Uh, yeah, I think so, because I think we just got our house afraid, and they said it came in at like 120 something, but we have a second mortgage also. Oh, okay. What's the, what's the amount on the first and second, Sean? The first one is like one, 117, I think, 119, and the second one is like 35. 35, okay. So therefore, the only option I would have for you is if you were to bring 35 to the table to pay off that second mortgage, and then you could refinance just the first. That's why they're probably uh, telling you. Well, Is that even uh, an option? So there's no way we could refinance the first one? No, because it's gonna, your loan to value is going to include both the first and the second. And you said the first is not Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. It's not VA. It's not FHA. If it was any of those, by by all means, you'd have some options. But right now, the only option would be to pay off that second mortgage, and then you could uh, get the savings, and then slowly put your money that you're saving each month back into your savings of what you took out the thirty five thousand. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I wish yeah, I had better news for you. Yeah, and it's adjustable. Okay. Well, well, the good news is adjustables aren't going anywhere right now, right? I hope not. Right. <laughs> I don't so know. you're saying the thirty five thousand is adjustable? What is it? A home equity line of no, credit? No, no. The, the one nineteen is one nineteen. Okay. Um, I mean, I you could be both are. Sorry, I could both are. Well, that thirty five thousand home equity line of credit is probably interest only. So therefore, you can put more money towards the principal balance, which then will pay the principal balance down, and the payment will go down each month as the principal balance goes down. Right, right. Right? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. No problem, Sean. Have a good evening. Thanks for you the call. Yes, Ruth sir. and Culpepper. Ruth and Culpepper, you're up next. Thanks for calling. Hey, Ruth. Hey, how are you? Wonderful. How you doing? Doing great. Good. What can I do for you? Um, well, uh, we uh, have our home, and we need to sell it because my husband got a job out of state. Um, the home is called Underwater. Um, there's a first and a second on it, um, and we've made all payments on time. My husband did get laid off um, three years ago, mm-hmm. but now we uh, he uh, we have to move out of state. And if we do a short sale, we will that they say that lowers your credit score. Our credit score is good; it's like um, seven fifty. Right. So and if you do a short sale, you're going to have to wait three years before you can purchase a new home. Correct. So then you'll be stuck renting. However, a lot of lenders, if you can prove that you are moving because of a job, uh, because you're getting a new job, a lot of lenders will allow you to uh, sell the home and then kind of like a short sale, but then it's not on your credit. Or I've even heard of some lenders allowing you to take that mortgage with you 
okay, transferring it to another home. Oh, you okay. you want to talk to your lender before you do anything like default on the loan and ask them what options you have. But okay. tell them that you have been transferred, your husband's been transferred, so therefore you have to move. And if, you, okay. if they don't allow you to move, then you may default on the loan because that scares lenders big time, okay? okay? So you do have some options there, Ruth, absolutely. Okay. Even though, I mean, we... Even we've made our payments on time, and we're not not ever late. And and I applaud yeah. you for that. You're an anomaly, but the, okay. but at the same time, yes, you you want to call your lender and tell them exactly what you're doing and come up with the options. Okay. Okay. It was GMAC, and now that's no longer there. It's, um, it's, so we could call, I guess, the new company that yes. took over. Yep. And talk to a loan specialist and get their name so you can continue calling that person so you're not okay. transferred to different people every time you call, okay? Okay, yeah. Excellent. Thanks, okay. Ruth. Thank you. Sure. Bye bye. Triple eight two nine three nine two eight two. Let's go to Brandywine, Maryland. Talk with Frida. Hi, how are you? All right, how you doing? Good, Good. Frida. What can I do for you? Um, I'm here in the same store. I got an eighty twenty on the Wells Fargo. Yep. So when I try to go to Wells Fargo to get refinanced, they're telling me I'm on a Freddie Mac, so they don't want to work with me. Okay, I have equity in my home, and me and my husband, we got almost close to 800 in credit, good credit score, and what is my options? Okay, question. Did you say Wells Fargo said that it is Freddie Mac? Well, or- Okay, when I went to Wells Fargo, because Maryland had a lawsuit against Wells Fargo and right. Bank of America and the rest of them. Mm-hmm. So when I went to call Wells Fargo about the lawsuit, they telling me they got my loan through Freddie Mac. Okay. So when I called Freddie Mac, I, it's like I got to run around. It's like no one is giving me no clarity or what. Right, and nobody so likes right, to run around. Right, so I'm on the water, and my home, when I bought it, it was caught back at 340 but now it's like two. 17, something like that. Wow. Well, it, well, the equity, right. And that's in Brandywine. Nobody, yeah, Brandywine right, took a pretty big hit, just like Mitchellville and Fort Washington, all those areas out there. But they're coming back. The, that's the good news. So and it, no, go ahead. is the 20, the 20% of the 8020, that's a home equity line of credit, right? Well, at the time when I got it, the, the 20 was a balloon, so I had to get rid of that. So I went with Bank of America to get rid of that, so that's a fixed rate. So I'm, so I'm dealing with Wells Fargo and Bank of America. Okay, what's your interest rate on that first mortgage? Uh, the first one is like four point something. Okay. High four, and the second one is like eight, I think, eight five. Okay. It's been well, a while. well, good news. On that first mortgage, there's no point in refinancing because that's right around where rates are right now. So okay. even if I could help you, if I magically got rid of that second mortgage, I'd be getting you a close a rate to close to what you are at right now. So let's talk about that second. That's eight eight and a half percent Bank of America. You need to call them and tell them that you would like it transferred to a line of credit. Now that line of credit will adjust each month, so it'll be adjustable rate, but it will give you the option of paying interest only. So okay. a, a fixed rate second mortgage is always a higher rate than a adjustable rate. But an adjustable rate, although it can adjust, is a much lower rate, and you have the option of interest only. So call Bank of America. That should help you out. If if they give you a hard time, call me at the office, okay? Okay, then. Okay, then. Thank Uh, you. All right, Frida. Thank you. Okay, bye. Triple eight two nine three nine two eight two. A couple of lines open. We still have some calls lined up. We'll get to as many as we can. You want to try to get in the uh, line? You can do it at triple eight two nine three nine two eight two. Okay, we'll try to get back to as many calls as we can here. Let me see who's next. Bill in Fredericksburg. Bill. Yes. Uh, hey, Bill. How you doing, buddy? Great. I have a first uh, mortgage with SunTrust at 270000 that I just uh, refied under the HARP program. Nice. Um, at a 3.87% um, rate. Excellent. I also sit on a 70 k um, second mortgage for that that I couldn't do anything with HARP. My question is, I just did the refi. I just am um, going through a hardship through a, uh, a separation and a divorce. My question is, am I eligible to apply for a modification since the loan hasn't been um, hasn't been there very long? Well, I mean, the 3.875 that you're at is lower than where interest rates are right now. Um, so you couldn't you wouldn't refinance it. But as far as a modification, uh, it's yeah, a very a small box that people fit in that get their loan modified. Most lenders will say they either make too much money, so they shouldn't give them a modification, or they make too little, so that if the lender does modify it, they're not going to be able to pay it. So it's very small box, but you'd want to call your lender, ask them. They're going to want everything, tax returns, 
uh, pay stubs, bank statements, everything, blood almost. And they're going to be the ones, and it's, it's specific to whatever lender you have. So last question. What, what's the sweet spot? Is this, does anybody know the sweet spot to where you want to be for that lender? It, no, it's, it's specific to each lender. So it would depend on who your lender is and what they go. You want to find one specific person in the loss mitigation department, and that person will help guide you through the modification process, okay? And is it worth getting a lawyer to do that? Nah, uh, not really. You can do it yourself. Okay. Save Thank yourself you. the money. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Triple eight two nine three nine two eight two. Let us talk with Sabrina and Laurel. Hey, Sabrina. Hi. What's going on? Um, I have a uh, interest only loan that is due to balloon in two years, and I am interested in trying to get on the heart program. Uh, at the time this house was refinanced, I was going through a divorce mm-hmm. and needed to consolidate the two um, first and second mortgages. Right. So I'm interested in finding out if, for whatever reason, I'm not able to get it refinanced in the two years. Is there anything? Uh, can you just give me some advice on sure. what Sure, absolutely. I might do? Most, most balloons, Sabrina, have a conversion factor. So once it balloons, it will convert to a fixed rate. But you can go to our website and see if you qualify for HARP. Do that because there's a link to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And the website is cornerstonefirst.com. Hit the link that says HARP, and that will allow you to do that. And I think we've run out of time, haven't we, Don? Thanks, Sabrina, for the call. We have, in fact, Randy and Frederick, Brenda and Alexandria. I'm so sorry we're out of time. But if you call the office, even right now, folks are there ready to take your call. 202-625-1221. 202-625-1221. And they're there all night. There you go. Here, and guys. you say, look, I wanted to talk with Mark. They'll <laughs> arrange that for you. They will arrange that, and uh, you can leave your number, if nothing else. Mark, good man that he is, will call you back, right? Thank you, yes. Yes, I will. And uh, again, it's always fun to do it, and obviously folks have these questions they really are concerned about, and I can't think of a better place to refer them to than what we do every day, Cornerstone well, First and Financial. I appreciate that, and you're such an excellent host. Oh, well, thank you. The check's in the mail. (laughs) There we go. And I'll see you in a couple months. (laughs) All right. Uh, Thanks, folks. Again, uh, let me uh, just tell you, cornerstonefirst.com on the web is the number. Cornerstonefirst.com on the web is the site, I should say, and the phone number. And, again, if you want to call and you say, I really do want to talk with Mark, uh, and he doesn't have to be in, just leave leave a a voice message or leave leave the message with the folks there.